I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today on my community, someone made the comment that there's just one city worth living in if you're going to be living in Nicaragua. But which one is it? And is that true? Is there really one that stands out as so much better than the rest? Is there one place you should be looking at and not really looking at any broader other options? I don't think it really comes down to just one, but which one was it? Why? Do you agree? Do I agree? And what would I recommend if you really are looking for the perfect place to live here in Nicaragua? Let's get to that right after the bump. When I first moved to Nicaragua nine years ago, we first lived in the tourist center of Granada. I've talked about this a bit on the show. It got us into Nicaragua. It was an easy introduction to the country and it has a lot of resources. If you're new, whether you're just on vacation and you just wanna learn about the country or you're moving to Nicaragua, considering a move to Nicaragua and you're looking for a place where it's a little bit easier to get started simply because there's more restaurants, more tourists, more people speak English, more expats. Well, then Granada is going to make an awful lot of sense for you. But once we had lived there for a little while and we were going to be putting down roots here in Nicaragua, we ended up living elsewhere in the country and we ended up here in the city of Leon, Nicaragua's second city, the second largest city in the country after the capital of Managua. When you talk to different people, everyone has a different vision of what Nicaragua is to them. Those who live down south in San Juan del Sur have a hard time imagining living up here in the north. It's a very different environment. Those who live in Granada are often very insular because they have so many resources resources there in the city, especially for an expat or an enclavial expat, that they rarely go out and explore the rest of the country. Those of us who live out here in Leon are a little bit isolated because we're so far away from everyone. The distance to the nearest city is a bit farther than almost anywhere else in the country with uh, Chinandega up to the north just a little ways. And of course, if you live up in the mountains in Esteli or Matagalpa, you're going to have another vision of the country entirely. And that's all before we talk about the largest city in the country. Those who live in Managua easily forget that the rest of the country exists because it's such a large city and so many people travel into the center that no matter what you're doing, people will come to you instead of you needing to go to them. So everybody has their own little slice of the country. And that's before we even consider things like the Corn Islands, the Eastern Coast, or the small cities like El Viejo or uh, Boaco, Wiwigalpa, or Wigalpa, uh, and, and like that. The country really does have a lot of different regions and depending on the lifestyle you're looking for, you may find a different area to be something that is right for you. And as I've mentioned on the show before, there is a certain likelihood that over time your taste will change. The nature of moving to a new country, especially one like Nicaragua, especially given the nature of my likely audience, which is typically North American English speakers and less likely European English speakers and even less likely farther abroad English speakers and really unlikely not English speakers at all. Given my audience, the chances that you're going to come to Nicaragua and have a really good sense of who you want to be there and what Nicaragua is for you right away when you first arrive is unlikely. Chances are you will need a certain amount of just hand-holding and getting used to living in the country and over time you'll find your own pace and which aspects of life in Nicaragua make the most sense for you if it does indeed make sense for you as hopefully for many of you it does especially those of you who get a chance to come down. Because of that people who are new to the country or tend to be very insular tend to have a very different view of Nicaragua than those of us who have been here longer or are really looking to integrate more into society. And we talk about this quite a bit on the show so none of this should be new and surprising unless you're new to the show in which case Welcome. Okay, so when you're first coming to Nicaragua, it is incredibly likely that you're going to end up in Granada. It really is the best spot to launch your exploration of Nicaragua from in nearly all cases. Some people will find San Juan del Sur makes a little bit more sense for them. A few Managua and once in a while, if you have someone who's really opposed to the warmer weather, they may start in a Matagalpa or Esteli simply because they can rule out any place that's any warmer than that. But that's not too many people. I know we talk about how warm Nicaragua is and it's the tropics here, so you may think that it's so warm that you have to start there, and certainly the mountain towns can be very, very pleasant, but the majority of people, once you've put in enough time here to actually start to acclimate, will find that places like Leon and Granada and Rivas and Managua are all perfectly adequate. Yes, they're warm, but 
I'm out here in the outdoors on a reasonably normal day here in Leon, and it is incredibly pleasant and, and nice and don't think anything of it. You do adapt over time for most people. A few really do need that colder temperature, and a few people will be moving in and out of the country on a regular basis, and they will find it harder to adapt, and so cooler weather can make that a little bit more of an easy adjustment for them, whether they're coming down every few weeks or every few months or whatever. Now, in the comment, the things that were listed as the reasons why Granada was the perfect city, and that is the answer that was given in the comments, right? That Granada was the only place in the country worth living, but the reasons that were listed I found a little bit odd. One was that it was close to the airport. All of these things are reasonable, but are they important in deciding in a city? The second is that it was close to beaches, the third that it was close to Costa Rica, and the fourth that it has a lot of expats. Now, this definitely, let's start at the end one here. For a lot of people, you want to be around a lot of expats. If you're moving to a new country, being around other people that are a little bit more like you, have the same background, have the same linguistic properties, that may be something that's very beneficial. You may really be looking for a place where you can go out and very easily hang out with other expats. Not that you're trying to avoid Nicaraguan society or anything of the sort, just sometimes being a far from home, it's nice to have some ties to at least something a little bit familiar. And I know living out here in Leon, we definitely have a lot of expat friends we tend to hang out with because we have a lot of shared experiences and it's much uh, more simple to hang out. It's a lot easier to converse and do a lot of things. And we have certain experiences here in country that we share that we don't share with the locals, such as dealing with immigration or border runs or residency, paperwork, those kinds of things, the types of houses we're investing in, how we find resources and things like that, things that Nicaraguans may not have to deal with ever at all and for us are major parts of our lives. So certainly there is an affinity for other expats in many cases. However, I don't know that I would generally, for the majority of people, say that living in a place because there's a lot of expats is a positive. If you were to do so, then San Juan del Sur definitely takes the winner there because it is nearly all expats. That's probably stretching the point a bit, but the percentage of expats in San Juan del Sur is much higher than in Granada. In Granada, certainly you're going to get a lot of tourists, but it's more tourists than it is expats. The number of expats is high and you'll have no problem finding other expats, but you're less likely to find them in so much of an enclave as much as just a city that has a lot of them there. And that is what brought us there in the first place, had such a tourist infrastructure, it was so obviously presented to expats as a possible place to go, that it just became the obvious choice when we didn't know where else to go. So that's where we ended up. But I worry that a lot of people that end up in Granada do so in the, what I call the Phantom of the Opera mode. Now, if you're familiar with musicals, you probably know Phantom of the Opera. And what I found, especially given the age that I am, when I was in high school, and I came from a musical background, right? I always liked musical theater. I knew tons and tons of musicals long before I got into high school, and I was a music major in college, so this fits my background, right? I'd grown up going to musicals, whether on Broadway or up in Canada, uh, on King Street in Toronto. I knew musicals not only from TV and movies and seeking them out and performing in them, but also from actually going and seeing uh, those. For many people, the first musical that they ever saw, especially in person, was Phantom of the Opera. It was incredibly popular when I was in early high school. What you would constantly hear is people raving about how it was the greatest musical ever, and it was often referred to as an opera, which of course it is in no way an opera. It is a musical that takes place at an opera. Much like if you had a movie that took place at a theater, you wouldn't say you saw a theater show, you would say you saw a movie. Or if you saw a TV show where they made a movie during the TV show, you wouldn't say you saw a movie, you saw a TV show. So a lot of people saw this and had no idea what they were seeing and thought they had become fans of opera without even knowing what opera was because the musical doesn't explain opera, they expect you to already know it. They also then, for those who figured out that it was a musical, often raved about how it was the greatest musical ever. But when you press them universally, people who liked it had never seen another musical and were not comparing it to anything. They thought they had discovered musical as an art form and that they were promoting musicals and that this was the example of it. But for people who were familiar with musicals, they would talk about Rent or Les Miserables or uh, Oklahoma State Fair. And they'd say, wow, you think this is better than those? And people would say, I've never heard of those. And you'd say, wow, you're taking what most people who like musicals think is a really bad musical in general, and you're raving about it without even checking 
common movies now or common <laughs> musicals it would be similar to if you went to the movies for the first time you'd never seen a movie before but you knew other people talk about them a lot you go to the movies you see just a mediocre generic everyday movie that no one thinks anything of and you come back and tell everyone how movies are the hot new thing and you've discovered the greatest movie that's ever been made and people say really you think it's better than Star Wars, or Avatar, or Titanic, or uh, Jaws, or Casablanca, or, you know, Orson Welles, Citizen Kane, and you say, I've never heard of those, those are movies? And you say, you, you seriously are telling people <laughs> that this is the best thing, and you've never seen those things. What we find with Granada is often the same thing, and you find this with travel all over the world. People will often rave about the first place they go, because it's the only place they go, and what they actually end up discovering is that they really like travel, or they really like Europe, or whatever. They're not actually digging into multiple places to see how they compare. You get a lot of this from Granada. A lot of people go to Granada, never go anywhere else, and are like, this is fantastic. What they're really saying is that Nicaragua is fantastic, or Latin America is fantastic, or maybe just getting out of wherever they started from is fantastic, or maybe just the whole like lifestyle of being an expat is what makes it fantastic. There's so many things that you don't know what thing is actually triggering that, but very often it's not the city that they're in because they're not actually living in different cities to compare them. They're just going to one, discovering that it's great, and then being sure that it's great. And we have no idea that that's what's happening here, and a lot of people truly like Granada once they've had uh, enough experience with it, and they really do test other things, and they say, wow, no, this is what we like. It happens. But there's also a really strong trend of people to go there, nowhere else. And what they're telling you is that they're very happy with their choice to move to Nicaragua. And Granada is good enough and not pushing them to go any further afield. And that is absolutely fine. But be careful when taking advice from people who may not be going other places and may not be doing the comparisons that you think that they're giving you. Um, that's just often the case, right? So there's a lot of that coming from Granada because it is where people start. And it does encourage people not to go other places because it has all these things in one place. It's very unlikely for people to keep exploring. So, okay. So that's important just to understand that that's what it's like. And it's also important to understand that, yes, it has a lot of expats. But for a lot of people, an awful lot of people, especially once you've been here for a little while, being intentionally close to expats is rarely what you're looking for. You're generally looking to get farther away from them over time. When you first arrive, absolutely, you're probably going to want to be closer to expats, but that will probably change relatively quickly. Now, of course, if you get a group of friends and you're just like, well, these are my friends now, I don't want to explore any further because I found my friends and this is perfect, then yes, you're going to want to stay wherever you started, which it does give you a bit of maybe you want to think about where you're going to start and not just start in a place where you're going to become locked down simply because that's where you get to know people. So you want to be a little bit careful with that. But it, there is that that certain trend, and, and that's realistic, right? But over time, chances are you're going to want to be more around Nicaraguan culture, simply because you're going to learn Spanish over time. You're going to get to know the food. You're going to get to know the restaurants. You're going to get to know how to get around. All those things that tie you into your local spot will become loosened, and you'll start to have this broader uh, Nicaraguan world that you're able to explore and be a part of. And as that happens, being tied down to Granada may start to be, not necessarily, but may start to be a negative to you, especially if you're on any way on a tighter budget, because easily Granada can cost significantly more, up to double what much of the country will cost. Now, if you're going out for dinner at a nice restaurant, yes, that could approach double. And your rent could approach double. Most other things are not going to be that dramatic. And never do you have to go that far. If you're going to go to the grocery store and cook for yourself, you may find just a few percentage points higher, not double in any way. But you're still, lifestyles in general in Granada are going to cost you a premium because you have a greater selection of things, greater access to tourists, greater access to other expats. All those things drive up the prices. So Granada is generally quite a price premium over other parts of the country. Not as extreme as San Juan del Sur, but for normal cities throughout the country, it's on the high end of the scale. Now, given many Nicaraguans live there as well, but it is the city of mansions. It is a city of beautiful architecture, and it is a place where Nicaraguans often have to live on the outskirts because its downtown is quite a bit more expensive. And you can see the same thing play out in Antigua, Guatemala on an even more extreme scale. So Granada is not that bad, but it does happen. Now let's look at the other things that were said though, close to beaches. This one really threw me because of all the major cities in Nicaragua, other than those in the mountains. So Matagalpa, Esteli, and Hinotega, all the other major cities of the country are closer to the beaches rather than farther. Granada is actually one of the farthest, unless you include the 
the lake beaches, which no one does, right? You can't really go swimming there. They're not beachfront, like go hang out. It's not like that, right? So Granada is actually farther. Masaya, Managua, Chinandega, Leon, Rivas, Hinotepe, Didiamba, San Marcos, all of them closer to the beaches, some by quite a bit. Managua is about 90 minutes to the beaches, Chinandega about 40 minutes, Leon is just 15 minutes, uh, Didiamba is probably 30 minutes, Messiah is whatever Granada is minus about 10 minutes, right? Granada pushes about two hours from the beaches, Rivas maybe 20, 25 minutes, maybe a little bit farther, but they're all much closer than Granada. So I find that one weird that specifically Granada makes getting to the beaches harder than many of the other cities. Not not that that's a big negative if you're not looking to be on the beach all the time, not a big deal, and Granada does have accessibility to the beaches, but nearly all the other cities have their own beaches. All the ones I mentioned have their own at some point, except for Messiah, um, that, that are associated with the city. Even Managua has Managua beaches. Leon, Chinandega, Rivas, they all have their own beach zones along the coast, uh, and so they have their own culture, their own direct roads going to that, and so forth. Still, some ways away, unless you're in Leon or Chinandega, possibly Rivas, but in general, not that bad. So that's an odd one for Granada. It's actually the anti-beach city of the large cities. It's definitely the farther one away. Now, when it comes to the airport, again, this one is a little bit, yes, it, Granada's not bad to the airport, but it's not as close as Messiah. Messiah is not as close as Managua. The airport is actually in Managua. The distance from Granada to the airport may not be that far, but the amount of time it takes to get there is actually not that great. At its longest, I've taken 45 minutes to go from Granada to the airport, and given that's not bad, you can certainly not complain too much about a 45-minute trip to the airport. Growing up in New York, it was 45 minutes to go to my local airport for sure, so not a big deal. If we're coming from Leon, we generally say it's two hours to get to the airport, but I have done it in 75 minutes. 75 minutes compared to 45 is only a difference of 30 minutes. Now, that is a lot when you're heading to the airport, when you just want to get picked up, do simple things, yes. But how often are you flying? Ask yourself this carefully. For some of you, some of you, you're going to be flying very often, and distance to the airport is going to be super important. If that's you, Granada is easily pretty far away. You're actually going to look at Messiah, or more likely eastern Managua, which includes areas like we showed on the uh, on the show recently, Villa Fonte, Via Fontaine, La Aurora, Santo Domingo. Those areas are really close to the airport. You're looking at a total travel time of under 20 minutes, sometimes like 15 minutes. That's really not bad. Completely different than 45 minutes or whatever coming from Granada. Again, totally doable. We're not talking about far from the airport, but if you're going to be at the airport all the time and it's a major concern for you, then Granada isn't that good, just like with the beaches. But if you're only going once in a while, then it's close enough, but really is Leon or Matagalpa that far away that you would actually make it a negative for most of us? We're only going to the airport a few times a year, and the extra 30 to 90 minutes to get to the airport may be slightly inconvenient, but to use that as a qualification for where you want to choose to live is definitely odd. Uh, to give some examples, if I'm being picked up at the airport, I typically pay, and this is in the middle of the night, I typically fly in the middle of the night. When I arrive, I typically pay about 70 to $80 for a private driver with their own car to wait for me at the airport, pick me up, take all my luggage, put it in the car, and drive me, just me, not shared with anyone, all the way to Leon, two hours away. I can nap in the car. I know it's all being taken care of. Like, it's only $70. Like, you put all that together, and it's like, okay, this is, this is how bad Leon is. And then Rivas would be similar. Managua would be nothing compared to that. Masaya would be nothing compared to that. Granada should be quite a bit less, but we're all talking within this envelope. Right? It's a very it's a very small envelope of cost and time. And because you're being picked up, once you're already having a taxi come get you, if that's what you're doing. Now, if you just want, you know, your spouse to come pick you up, you have kids that are staying at your house, they come get you. Everyone's situation is different to consider those things, but also be realistic. Being near an airport, and especially not the best airport for connections, isn't that big of a deal. And very importantly, the new airport that is going in, that is expected to handle the majority of the international traffic is going on the north side of Lago uh, Xolitlan, on the north side of Lago Managua. That airport is going to be more than an hour, quite a bit more than an hour from Granada. My expectation is going to be about an hour and a half, maybe just a smidgen more. That means that the distance from Granada to that airport and from Leon to that airport and from Matagalpa to that airport are all going to be about the same. 
That doesn't make it really closer to Leon than, it, than the current airport, but it makes it farther from Granada. It does make it much closer to Matagalpa, so it just adjusts where the flights are. Now, still, there's going to be the original airport in Managua that will still be there. We assume many flights will still be coming out of there because it's super convenient flying directly in and out of the capital. But just be aware that that thought that Granada is especially close to the main airport is true today. But it's only so true, and it's only expected to be so true for so long. And then it's going to be nearly equidistant with Leon and Matagalpa from the new main airport. Okay, then the other thing, it's really close to Costa Rica. So this is true, it is reasonably close to Costa Rica, about the same distance as Messiah, only a smidgen closer than Managua, not as close by any stretch whatsoever as Rivas or its associated towns like San Juan del Sur, which are a quarter the distance to Costa Rica. It's not as close as uh, Didiamba or Hinotepe. Those areas are much closer to uh, Costa Rica. And in reality, it's only a little bit closer than Leon. For Leon, we come down the west coast, we bypass Managua. We do have a new highway that makes that super simple. So we're able to be at Costa Rica in about four and a half hours. Now, yes, Granada is closer than that a bit closer than that. It's more like three, three and a half hours. So you do notice that difference. But again, how often are you expecting to go to Costa Rica throughout the year? This is a major factor. If you're considering spending twice as much in rent every month, if you're expecting to be in a half the size city of Leon, and I'm not trying to sell you on Leon, it's not the perfect city for most people either. But if you're comparing these things, I find it very odd to say, well, it's close to the beach, but it's eight times the travel time as Leon to the beach. Uh, when going to the airport, it's soon going to be nearly identical as a far-flung city. And when going to Costa Rica, yes, it may be three hours instead of four or four and a half hours, but most people are only going to go to Costa Rica once, maybe twice per year. That's only a couple hours. Those are not events that normally you want to use as criteria for selecting a place to live because they're just not significant in your life in any way. Uh, if I was to pick on things that matter. I would My rent every month, my cost of dinner every night, my uh, selection of food, my ease of hiring staff, my uh, ease of getting a taxi, my ability to walk around the places that I want to be, uh, access to places that I want to go all the time, whether it's a volcano or the beach or hikes in the country, whatever. So many things that affect you day to day. Now, for some people, the beach will be an everyday effect. But if you live in Granada, Going to the beach every day is two hours. If you live in Leon, it can be 15 minutes. So it changes significantly what the lifestyle is. In Granada, you literally can't make the beach an everyday thing. And in Leon, even without thinking about it, it could just become an everyday thing. That's a significant difference. If you're looking at going to the airport every day, then absolutely, you probably want to be in Managua. And that's just how it is. If you're going to fly that much, you want to be close enough to the airport to just call a taxi at any time, or maybe even just take a bus, right? Consider those things. Managua really does have all the expats. It's closer to the beaches. It's nearly equidistant to Costa Rica and it has the airport itself. So it, for the reasons that we mentioned Granada, actually crushes Granada in the overall weighting. Now, for you, I've talked about this before, everybody has a different city that's right for them, if any city in Nicaragua is right for you at all. But there's a lot of options and I think it's important because especially when you're coming from abroad, when you're new to the country, you tend to look at factors that are very odd compared to the ones as to when you actually live here. When we live here, we know that going to Costa Rica, for most of us, is an incredibly rare thing. Yes, when we first move here, we're super excited about how easy it is to get to Costa Rica. And there are the rare people who live in Nicaragua but want to go to Costa Rica all the time. Not just once in a while, not a special trip. They want to make it like a weekend thing great, then you're going to want to live much closer than Granada, trust me. But those people are the rarity, and they live very close to the border for that reason normally. There's always an exception, nothing wrong with the exceptions, but lots of people when they first move down are very excited about the fact that Costa Rica being a popular travel destination is so close. But once living here and realizing that you already live in paradise, you already have the beaches, you already have the food, you already have the language, you already have basically everything that you can get in Costa Rica, just not as many restaurants at a much lower cost, pretty soon most people are like, why would I spend so much time going to Costa Rica and so much money to be there, especially as there's very little on the border. You have to drive deep into Costa Costa Rica to really get to much of anything. Why would I do that on a regular basis? I can get all the things that I want in Costa Rica nearly here in Nicaragua at a fraction of the cost, often far less than half. There's better ways to spend your time and money. 
and doing it in country is the way to go. So that is rarely a ongoing factor, but all of us when we're first moving are super excited about how close we can be to the border. So just be aware that that's generally something that's gonna go away. Same thing with the Honduran border. It may be like, oh, I'm just gonna go to Honduras. I'm gonna go to El Salvador all the time. They're right there. A few people will, but in general, most people find that they just don't do that that often and how close you are to the border just isn't that significant. And some people will bring up border runs, but again, border runs are a maximum of two times a year. They only go on until you get your residency, which could be months or years, depending on you and your cycle and what you're trying to do and all kinds of factors. But two times a year maximum, if you travel anywhere else, it reduces that number. I just worked in Belize. I didn't have to do a border run because I was working in Belize. I was in the United States doing some work before that. So I had already had two different times, I just put up four, two different times that I reset my, my visa for Nicaragua without having to do anything special and without having to do a border run. Most, not all, but most of you will experience this. You will not have to do a border run every time. Often, sure once every two years, for sure, almost guaranteed, once a year, easily, but twice a year, most people don't have to do it twice a year, and twice a year is the maximum that you have to. So being close to Costa Rica for that purpose rarely makes any sense at all. You could be the farthest point in the country and it's still trivial amounts of time to get down there for as infrequent as it generally happens. With the beaches, that's different. That could be a part of your lifestyle, so being close to the beach could be very important. Being around expats, yes, Granada has many, but it doesn't have the most. You're gonna find more in Managua, almost certainly. They're just not as obvious, but a little bit of effort, and you can see them easily. You can also get out to Granada very easily from there. In Messiah has plenty, Leon has plenty. There's lots of places where you can go and meet expats, hang out with expats, it's not a problem. I live in Leon, I can see expats anytime, any day, there's not like this shortage of expats where I'm like, oh, you know, I, I need to see expats and I don't know where any are. No, there's always expats around. I know exactly where to go. I know how to hang out and casually run into them. Even if I don't want to call friends and be like, hey, let's hang out. And I'm just like, let's just see who's out right now. That's easy to do, both tourists and those of us who live here, right? Tourists are not considered expats. But if I want to see tourists who are just hanging out right just go down to the square there's a couple of restaurants a couple of different hotels you can hang out in you'll see tourists if you want them now granada yes you're gonna get more you're gonna get swamped with them but unless you need a horde of expats or tourists you're gonna find that most of the cities around the country especially leon managua messiah matagalpa esteli rivas for sure san juan del sur are going to have so many tourists, so many expats that you're not actually going to have a shortage of them. That's not something you necessarily have to look for. The airport, again, all these factors, right? Think about how they actually apply to you. Are you really going to use the airport so often that you should adjust where you live and your cost of living based on it, all right? So this is really, I think, the point that I wanted to get with this video is less of selecting which city, but understanding that the factors we tend to talk about when we're new to the country or hypothesizing about the country are very different than the factors we would actually think about when we lived here. So for someone who is just arriving or just about to arrive, yes, airport, border runs, these are the things you're thinking about. So you're really concerned with how far they are, how long they're going to take, and you're not focused on how infrequently you're likely to do them once you actually live here. During the process of moving here, yep, you're probably going to the border once or twice. Yep, you're probably flying in once or twice. Those things are all happening, so they're very fresh in your consciousness. They're very much things that you, I, you, I just did this long drive up to Esteli from the airport, and that was annoying. I don't want to do that anymore. Okay, but do you want to do it not anymore by moving close to the airport or by not flying all the time, right? Now, some people do want to fly all the time. I love to fly. I love to travel. So being closer to the airport is something that would impact me a bit, especially because I travel, my wife travels, my business partner travels. Like, we're going to, to and from the airport a bit. We're doing our own pickups often. Uh, there are reasons why we would be served a little bit better by being closer to the airport. Managua would work well for us for a lot of reasons. All those resources in one spot can be pretty handy for Sure, but we really like the lifestyle out here in Leon, and that rapid access out to the beach is amazing. So the factors that you tend to actually have to worry about are very different. It's how do I get to dinner every day? Where do I go for entertainment, live music, or uh, karaoke, whatever it is that you like to do? How are you going to find that? How far is that going to be? How many options for that are there going to be? You really like karaoke? Is the one place that's in whatever location you're looking at going to be adequate? Or do you need a bigger location that has more places that do karaoke? Are there hotels? You like to stay in hotels. I know a lot of people who live in one of the cities, but then 
stay in a hotel in that same city that is like hotel life from time to time. Does that city have hotels that you want to do that with? These are all things you have to consider because they're your everyday life, not things you do just once in a while or especially during a move. For the majority of expats, where you are able to go to dinner or where you're able to order dinner from, where you're able to hang out and do outdoor activities, where you're able to uh, go hang out with your friends, find friends, whether it's a local bar or something of, of that nature, what your travel is like around your own town, how you're going to get your groceries, those kinds of things. Those are the things, and maybe the beaches, are things that impact you every day. And travel time to Managua for an awful lot of expats is something that they don't think about until they live here. Most of us who live here full-time, find that going to Managua is very important. It's much like living in England and going into uh, London. There's just a lot of resources centralized in Managua, not just government stuff, not just like paperwork and things that really I almost never have to do. I've had to go into Managua only a couple times in all these years for anything official. It's always just for shopping. It's going to Price Smart. It's going to Walmart, it's going to, to Super Porta, it's going to the mall, it's going to, to restaurants, those kinds of things. Sometimes it's going out to do bowling and some activities like that that we don't have out here, for sure. But most people that we know, that's the one thing is they wish it was easier to get into Managua. Not that they necessarily want to live there, not that they want to hang out there. I actually like it better than most. But they do find that there are so many resources in Managua that they want to use, that they do wish they had easier access to get into Managua to get around Managua, get those things. And then in many cases, they want to get back out. But that is the one really hidden thing. Other than that, I think if you really sit down and think about your lifestyle and try to picture yourself in a new lifestyle, do you really plan on going to the airport so much? Do you really plan on going to the southern border so often that they're going to cause you to want to readjust where you're going to live? Do you really want to hang out with expats so much more than with Nicaraguans? Not just today, but into the future that you want to make your long-term planning around how many expats are super accessible. Never assuming that you want none. I really do recommend that you stay in a place where there's at least some expats for the most of you, right? The majority of you do not want to be so isolated that you don't have any resources, no one to talk to, no one to bounce ideas off of, no one to commiserate with. Yes, that is good stuff you probably want to have. But in general, sit down and really make a list of what you like to do on any given evening, it, what is really going to matter, how often you're really going to go to the airport, how often are you really going to go to the border. And if it's 10, 20 times a year, yeah, seriously consider how close you are to those things in your planning. But if it's once, twice, maybe three times a year, say how many extra hours is it going to be being somewhere else? And when you add one extra hour in a taxi, which is often what you're going to do. Not an hour of you driving. In most cases, some of you will drive. But if I'm going to Costa Rica and I'm just going to the border, I don't drive that. I hire a taxi to take me down. And if I'm going three hours to the border or four hours to the border, yes, it's an extra hour in the car. It's a few more dollars. But does it really impact me in some in incredibly way? Probably not. Once I'm getting in that taxi, I'm loading up my stuff, napping in the back of the taxi, getting on my phone and doing my Duolingo while I ride along in the countryside, going an extra hour is pretty minor for me overall. And so maybe not for you, but for a lot of us, you just have to gauge, oh yeah, I'm already in the car, I'm already in the taxi, it's not going to be a big deal. I hope you find the right city for you here in Nicaragua. If you've got questions, as always, get down there in the comments and let me know. And if you would be so kind as to make a video of yourself and send it in, that would be amazing. I love putting people on the show. And if you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, I say this, it comes directly to me and helps pay for the cameras and, and all the things we do. It really does take a lot to do the show. We've been out to Managua, been a couple different places recently. We're starting to get more and more travel under our belts. We're talking about getting a new vehicle so we can do even more travel that really uh, our, our old Toyota is in very rough shape and it does make a certain amount of travel a little bit more difficult, uh, but we are trying to get out and do those. And the coffees that you guys buy me do help make all of that possible. And uh, it does fund this show costs more in cameras than it generates for sure. But you guys really do offset a significant portion of that. I love all my camera gear and stuff. That is my reward for doing the show. In most cases, please take a moment to post on social media, tell someone about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And I will do my best. Four episodes, pop them up on the screen. Just click on one and let it run in the background if you want. Watch it if you would. That'd be great. Like it, all that stuff, promote it. But it tells the algorithm that you like the show more than anything else that you do.